Hi friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Hey, I wanna start out today by thanking you so much for the photos and uh, videos that you sent me last week of your sourness was. It really uh, touched my heart. Last week was a tough week, not because of anything in my world, but just the world and I was feeling kind of down and then I got these pictures and videos from you guys and it really cheered me up and I really appreciate it. So send me your pictures, send me your videos, send me your questions. And for those of you that are still sending over recipes, keep sending those. I've got a big list and we'll get to everything. So thank you very much. Today, we are going to be making jammers from Grand Central. I love Grand Central Bakery. I think they're wonderful. And I thought they would be closed because of this virus thing, but it turns out they're still open. Um, they're open every day except Mondays until three o'clock. So if you can support a local Grand Central Bakery, please do. If you don't live near one or you just think jammers would be super fun to learn how to make, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I went down on Friday and bought their um, cookbook so we could get it right from the source and I wanted to give them a little support. So first thing we're gonna talk about today is flour. So in the United States, the way that we organize our flour, categorize our flour, is by the level of protein that it has. So all-purpose flour can be, I had to write this down so I didn't tell you the wrong thing. Um, all-purpose flour is between eight and 11% protein and bread flour can be up to 14% protein. And the reason why that makes a difference is because that um, determines how much gluten you can form in the dough and how strong the dough is. And so bread, when you want a chewy, delicious, tear apart dough, that's usually a high protein dough because that's what you want. In a biscuit or a scone, you want that snap. You want it to um, not form gluten. And that's basically the difference between like a biscuit and a bread is the amount of gluten that you're trying to form. And that's why in a bread, you're like kneading it and trying to get that going, getting, trying to get those strings going. And in a biscuit dough, they tell you, do not overwork it, don't overwork it, keep all your ingredients cold. That's because you don't want gluten to form. And it's the same thing for pie dough. So this recipe is essentially a giant buttermilk biscuit with some jam stuck in the middle of it. Um, the proportions might be a little bit different, but it's very, very similar to a buttermilk biscuit. So the way we're gonna start today is that the recipe calls for um, one pound, four ounces of flour. Now, I know that a lot of you don't measure your flour this way. A lot of you will measure it in cups. If you're measuring cups, that's four cups. I think you should weigh your flour. I generally don't try to micromanage what you guys do in the kitchen, but um, flour can be very different from how it's packed down or how it sits in the cup or if you're sweeping and scraping and all that stuff, you can get very different amounts of flour and if it's humid. Um, so I think that you should weigh your flour. Um, baking is not as forgiving as regular cooking. It's, it has a lot to do with chemo chemical reactions and so it's always good to be very exact in your baking. And scales aren't that expensive. The other thing I was going to tell you is Kitchen Caboodle, you can still order stuff from them and you just order it online, you can go pick it up at their warehouse. So if you don't have a kitchen scale and you want to support them, that's another good thing to do. So um, that's my kitchen scale, not an expensive one. So this is uh, one pound, four ounces of flour. So I'm going to put it in this bowl. And then the next thing that it's going to call for is um, it calls for three tablespoons of granulated sugar. So we're just going to put that over the top there. And, and then it calls for um, two teaspoons of baking powder, which is right there. And one teaspoon of baking soda. So that's in there. Sorry, I'm really, I'm really trying to follow the recipe so I do this right for you. And then it also calls for one and a half teaspoons of salt. And uh, I will post this uh, recipe online and I will credit them with this. Um, okay, so all of my uh, dry ingredients are together and I am going to just stir this around a little bit. You always wanna combine your dry ingredients pretty thoroughly. And so the, the next thing that this uh, recipe calls for is two sticks of very cold butter. So when I'm making, um, biscuits or scones, what I usually do is I cut up the cubes of butter that it asks for. And um, two sticks is actually one cup. And they ask you to cut it up into um, half inch pieces. And so what I usually do is I will put it in the refrigerator or freezer. Um, if I know that I'm gonna be doing it in the morning, I'll do it overnight. I'll do it on a little piece of wax paper so it doesn't freeze against the glass and make me crazy in the morning. 
And there's a lot of different ways to um, incorporate the butter into the flour. And <laughs> so last night when I was doing this, I was actually following the Grand Central recipe like right down to the T. And what they said is that you should use, you know, your big KitchenAid, you know, stand up mixer and use the paddle in order to incorporate the butter in the flour. Now chefs, which I am not a chef, have many different techniques and they have different equipment that I don't have. I don't know what the hell she was using, but that was a disaster. There was flour everywhere in the kitchen. And I even had the little hood on it and I had a towel around it and it was terrible. And all the paddle did was like, you know, go around and just throw cold butter against the flour and it, it's a disaster. So what I wanna tell you is, you can either do it the way my grandmother did it, which is to just shove it in there and with your hands and like, you know, rub the, rub the butter into the flour. A lot of really good cooks do that. If you watch a, sometimes I watch cooking shows on TV, you'll see a really good Southern chef with some butter or lard just, you know, in there. That works great. I don't generally do it that way because I don't want to warm up the butter too much. I got, you know, hot, sweaty hands, gross. Um, so what I usually use is my food processor. I know you're not supposed to, they say that it over mixes it, but um, it always works for me, especially when I make scones. And so I am gonna put this in here against all regulation. And I am using the, um, not the sharp blade, but the little, um, what do they call that? I think they call that the dough blade in there, the little plastic blade. Uh, so the reason why they want you to cut this up is so that you don't get like one big chunk right in the middle and it doesn't really um, spread around to the rest of it. So I spread those little chunks around. And then I put this bad boy on. You do not want to overmix this. Um, like we were saying before, like you don't, you don't want the butter to be liquefied. You don't want it to get warm. Um, you definitely don't want to create gluten. Okay, so I'm gonna pulse this a little bit. And all that I'm looking for is I'm just looking for the chunks of butter to be smaller. They don't have to be completely incorporated. So your chunks are broken up. You can still see butter in here. There you go. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. So now your flour and your butter are pretty much incorporated. Um, in the recipe, they want you to like leave big dime size chunks in there. Yeah. I can tell you I made this last night, it worked out fine. So, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl. And we are gonna add our buttermilk. So, oh, hey look, there are chunks of butter in it, just like they tell you to, so I'm not too far off from what they said. Uh, what they want to do in here is they tell you to make a well in the middle, and then they tell you to, um, they tell you to measure out one and a quarter to one and a half cups of buttermilk, but they only want you to put the first cup in just to see, you know, how much moisture you've got going in here. So I'm gonna put the first cup in here. And then I am just gonna do this with my hands, and I know that that's probably not what you prefer. If I had a, a dough hook, I'd probably do it that way because that's really cool, but I don't have one yet. Isn't that weird? I should have one. All right, so like I said, with the biscuit, you definitely don't wanna overmix this dough. So we are just trying to incorporate this uh, buttermilk with the dough. And basically what you're looking for is for it to not be um, floury anymore. <laughs> I made a dress. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put the rest of that in there. You don't want it to be floury and dry and crumbly, but you also don't want it to be a wet dough. It's gotta be sort of a soft um, dough that still has a lot of texture in it. So that looks pretty good. That is a nice dough. It's not too sticky, it's not too dry. Um, and so I am gonna put this out on a floured table. And because my hands look like this, I'm actually gonna learn how to edit video. So I will be right back. Okay, so I got all that nasty stuff off my hands, but you know, I'm gonna get my hands in here again. Because basically what you do at this point is you will throw this over onto your um, a floured surface and you just bring it together just a little bit, like you don't wanna overwork it. And you want it to be just raggedy like this. Um, you don't want it to be a fine dough. You're not gonna ever roll it because you want it to stay nice and loose and craggy. Have you ever had one of those, the way they fall apart and they have little crags in them? And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a rough dough. So just push it together, don't press it out, don't roll it out, just leave it all a big raggedy mess like this. This is a perfect dough because it's not too dry and it's not wet. So 
Then all we have to do is punch these out, put them on your sheets. Uh, you can grease sheets or you can use parchment paper. I love using parchment paper. It's a game changer, especially when you're making pizza and you don't want it to be sticking on stuff. I'll show that to you when we make pizza dough. Okay, so if you don't have a biscuit cutter, you have some options. Um, this says that you, the recipe says that you should use something at least two and a half inches across. So a standard biscuit cutter is, you know, a little under three. This is a, a ring mold for food that's actually exactly three inches across. And, but if you don't have either one of those, you could do what my grandmother did and use a, a drinking glass, just flour a drinking glass and put it in there. Or the other thing you could use is a standard um, mandarin orange can or a standard soup can or a bean can. Those are almost the exact same size as these guys. So you just tear one of these up, you know, make sure you clean up the edges and you can use that. So don't worry if you don't have any fancy stuff, you can always use a glass, you can always use a can, no big deal. So we're gonna put that in there. And like I said, you don't wanna overwork this dough, so you want these to come out of here real gentle. Oh yeah. So we're gonna put that on there like that. Don't twist. If you see me twist, don't do what I do. I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell my nieces. Don't be like your Aunt Cindy. Okay, so when you're done forming them, are you proud of me? I'm going to learn how to edit video. I just don't want to bore you. Um, take your bench scraper, and yes, if you don't have a bench scraper, you really should go get one of these. They're awesome. Um, you can find them at a kitchen store, you can find them at Cash and Carry, you can find them online. It's really nice for um, cleaning flour off your area. I'm just going to put it in there. Alright, when you're done with that, okay. Now you got these big beautiful bad boys and you know what you do next? Easy peasy. First of all, make sure your oven is um, preheating to 350. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna press it down in here. Now try really hard um, not to put too much pressure on the outside because you don't want these to be smooth biscuits. You want them to be rough, right? And um, you're gonna make a well in there a little bit deeper towards the bottom than it is towards the top, like a pinch pot. And see, that's what they look like. Those actually do look very similar to what you see in the store. That's kind of cool. Okay. And we're just gonna make a little hole in these. Okay, so my friend Paul was saying, oh my God, why don't you put chocolate chips in these? And I was like, gross, chocolate chips and jam? I don't wanna put jam in there. And then I realized that, hey, you know what? You don't have to put jam in here. You can put chocolate in the middle. So I did some earlier today with chocolate in the middle. I just put some of that ganache um, from that cake we were making a couple weeks ago and some chocolate chips together and put it in the middle and let it melt in the middle. And it was actually kind of cool. All right, so now that I have the little hole in the middle here, I'm going to take some jam. My, my neighbors drop off really cool stuff at my house all the time, and this is my friend Jill. She made this jam for me, which is really cool. Um, and I'm just gonna put like a tablespoon in the middle of these bad boys. All right, just like that. Thanks for the jam, Jill. All right. So that's what they look like before they go in the oven. Now, these are gonna go into oven at 350 for either 35 or uh, 40 minutes. When you grid them at Grand Central, they're very, very brown and very crusty, so don't be afraid to cook them all the way through. And are you ready for the drum roll? Are you ready for the big reveal? All right. I took these out of the oven this morning to show you. Ta-da! That's what they look like. That's what jammers look like when you're done with them. And they snap just like a buttermilk biscuit and they're delicious. I put chocolate in that one for Paul. And I had more of these, but I had to leave some for Vicky. I am trying to figure out a way to work Vicky into every episode. So far it's working out okay. So she came to pick up some of these this morning. So there you are. Those are Grand Central Jammers. Um, I hope you make them. I hope you're not afraid of them. I hope you let them be ugly because when they come out of the oven, they are gonna be delicious. So thanks for coming by the kitchen and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.